Howdy, it's Trouble Kane again, and I'm at the 9 inch South Bend lathe continuing this series that I'm making on the various parts of the South Bend lathe. And I've already talked about and cleaned up and examined the gearbox, the apron, and a few other miscellaneous parts. And today I plan on taking apart the uh, saddle. I remember that uh, this is the model number and the serial number of this machine. So be sure and watch those other videos as well because this is just one part of a series. Thanks for watching. This is going to be fairly easy to take the saddle off. I've loosened up the compound and I've cleaned that up a long time ago. I don't think I did it on video. And take the tail stock off and I'm going to see if I can just slide this off. There is a gib back there and I'm not sure if I have to take that off. But you can see this slides fairly freely and unless I run into some uh, corruption down here that prevents the sliding this should come right off. And it did. It's raining here in northern Illinois. Perhaps you can hear it, but it's rather comforting to be in my warm, dry shop here. I'm in the garage. The lathe is pretty well stripped down now, and this is going to be a good opportunity for me to clean the bed and clean the ways. I've already done some scrubbing here. I know it doesn't look like it, but uh, most of the dirt and chips are off of it. Now let's take a look at that saddle. It's raining harder now. Alright, I'm over on the bench here with this. And I have no intentions at this time of taking the cross slide off. I may later, I don't know. But you've seen me do that in a lot of other videos with different lathes. You can see the gib screws. And in flipping it over, this of course is the carriage lock. I finally gave up and put gloves on here because my hands just get so black within minutes and handling the camera and trying to pick my nose and do all that stuff just, just isn't uh, too, too great. All right, uh, you can see we've got a lot of crud here. Chips, dirt, grease, whatever. This is the gib I was talking about. I think I'm going to take that off. Well, I know I'm going to take that off right now. And... Uh, there might be shims under here, so if there are, I want to make sure that I uh, account for those and uh, reassemble it the same way. So let me get that off and then we'll take a look. I only own one snap-on wrench and that's it. And they are pretty wrenches. Well, these two bolts were tight. They were basically finger tight. Didn't even need that snap-on wrench. And why that was, I don't know. Look at the chips under there. That hasn't been off in a cone's age. I did a little superficial scraping on there and got perhaps 90% of the loose stuff off and this is what it amounted to here, a rather substantial pile of chips and some of those chips are even rusty so they've been in there a long time, maybe forever. So uh, at this point I'm going to clean up here just a little bit and put this in the solvent pan and start to clean it. That's going to take a little while. I expect the wear in the V grooves here to match the wear on the bed of the lathe, which was significant. So th that's almost a given before I really look at it closely. All right, be back in a few hours. I've been cleaning here for about a half hour, and I'm using a turkey baster as well as a scraper and brushes and so on. 
And I don't know what I was thinking. I guess I was delusional when I thought that I wouldn't have to take the cross slide off, but of course I do. And I have just loosened up the gibbs and backed off the screw and off comes the cross slide. Pretty gunked up also. Now I'll put this back in the pan. Because there's quite a few chips down there in the screw. And this is a white kerosene K1. Or that is, it was white kerosene clear a few minutes ago. And this is the general idea. This is a nylon brush. I should have gone down to the school to see if I could use their solvent tank, but what with the funny schedules at school and the security and all that, it's, it's really more bother than what it's worth. They think everybody that enters the building is a terrorist. You know, they're quite uh, hysterical about the whole thing. I guess it's just, it's good for the kids. It's, it's just that I've been through thousands of fire drills, bomb scares, and uh, hurricanes, and, and whatever, you know, and nothing ever happened. So it's all the boy who cried wolf with me. I've been working for about a half hour. My hand stayed semi-clean until that one glove disintegrated. And the cross slide looks pretty good. I'm sure the brass nut is worn. I didn't take that off. And I'm not going to do anything to this except I got quite a burr right here where somebody rammed something up against it. So I'll dress that with a, a file. That's clean and dry and ready to use. And the uh, saddle looks okay, but again it has that tremendous wear here. I don't know if you can tell it or not. But there's quite a catch here that matches up with the <clears throat> ways. If I take this ruler, that should just scrape right across, but there's a considerable ridge there. So there's really equal wear on the uh, cross uh, the uh, saddle as well as <coughs> excuse me the bed. Nothing we can do about that. Just a fairly worn out machine. But at least it's clean now. Remember, this is the the gear that provides the power cross feed through that gear train that I talked about on the carriage or on the <clears throat> apron. The cross feed screw is extremely worn in this area where it would get used the most. Unworn on either end and that's the way you can compare and, and just see how much wear there is because we know that it, it really didn't wear right there. So the the entire form of the thread at this point still looks like a nice acme thread. But as you move down into the worn spot, it's much narrower across the top. And I'm sure the wear is equal in that brass nut. I've still got some uh, touch-up work to do here. But this felt wiper here, or all four felt wipers, should be replaced, and they are available on eBay. But what's the point when a machine is this far gone? So I'm not going to worry about that. And then looking over at this side, I don't know how or why, but there's just a tremendous burr right here. So I will dress that down with a file. I don't know what got rammed against there unless it's 
the tail stock, but I, I'm not sure that would affect that. But I, I think that uh, that's a surface that the cross slide is uh, passing over, so I need to have that cleaned up. It won't take much to do that. Can you see the huge chip that is wrapped around the screw up here? See if I can get that out. There it is. Took a lot of air pressure to drive that thing up and back and into the screw. It's, at least it's aluminum and probably didn't cause... No, it's not. It's steel. Examining this South Bend Lee, there's something like an archaeological uh, dig and examination of things, but at first glance, as I cleaned up the gib here, it looks pretty good. But then, looking at this side, you can see where one uh, gib screw actually got forced almost all the way through, and that happened a long time ago because that's rubbed clean so that gib has been writing on uh, this well we're going to call it a well, not a dimple just the opposite little protrusion so if I file that off I almost sure that it will break into the hole so really the gib should be replaced just a few more observations on this and that's all I'm going to do with this uh, saddle and I'm going to move on to something else here but uh, again right here I think you remember from before that we're missing the correct nut here and there's just a nail or a rod jammed in there there's a washer right here a spacer washer just a common flat washer somebody put in there also I can see marks from a pliers or a pipe wrench right here and of course the corresponding one on the other side so we know that a hammer and chisel mechanic has been in here these uh, two pins I'm not sure what those are for those might have been uh, put in a, in a shop someplace and why this is machined but looking at this side those two holes and I still got to clean the threads out not that it matters but they've been spot faced as well and that holds the uh, uh, not the steady rest, but the travel rests. Or and back here on the back, there are two holes and two machine surfaces that have been painted and shouldn't have been painted. And those would hold on the uh, taper attachment. So that is ready to put on, and I may deal with uh, some of the issues here at another time, perhaps years from now. But it does work, but we got a little bit of end play, backlash, lost movement. The further I get into this job, the more things I'm doing that I was not planning on doing. And the next thing I was going to do was to clean up the bed real well. But now I decided I'm going to take the headstock off, clean that up. Remember, there's a bad gear in there. I don't think I intend to do anything about that, but I'm going to take the headstock off. I've already removed uh, the guard, and then it was over here, and the, guard, the gear guard here, which uh, held the switch, if you remember. So there's just one or two bolts, and that will come right off. I also have to unlink the belt tensioner. So that concludes this video, and you know what to watch for in the next video that's coming up. And I uh, hope you're enjoying this little uh, cleanup and inspection of the South Bend 9-inch lathe. And this is Tubal Kane saying so long for now, and I'll see you in my next video, and thanks for watching.